maybe we start off, uh, you know, Ed uh, closes the deal uh, last week, just kind of what did, uh, did you watch the film, uh, something like that, uh, Ed, the game last week. The energy. Uh, tremendous energy as a rusher. It's a critical uh, element to being able to win. And he was able to maintain his energy because wherever we are in the football game in two minutes, we need, we need to be at our best as a four-man rush unit, as one-on-one -on -one rusher. So the energy was excellent. It always provides population where the ball is. And that's one of the, the blue traits that he has. So that, that was really something that stood out. We've seen him more, I don't know, obvious, in a two-point stand. Not really. Ed can function out of that stance, and that's why. And also, if we have alignment variations, front variations, hopefully that looks, it, it gives the defense a little bit different look. They're not sure where Ed is going to be pre or post snap, so it just gives us a little bit of alignment variation. How much do you feel there was a feeling out period, the weeks after losing Matt and Tredavious and Daquan, and, and kind of figuring out how to fit what pieces in and, and do you feel you're past that point now, and that's why things kind of seem uh, stronger than ever? Well, when you lose players of that caliber, there's, there's definitely an adjustment. Whether you want to acknowledge that or not as coaches and players, there is an adjustment. Those are significant uh, contributors to our defense. And so you have to all of a sudden figure out uh, who's doing what and how the new players, the new pieces, are going to function and then how to get everybody working at the same level as as we did prior to those guys not being available. Eric, uh, against Kansas City, was that also you had Greg line up inside for a couple snaps, Shaq inside as well. What do you like about that matchup, getting those athletic guys uh, inside? Sure, just the, the quickness, the short area quickness. And with Greg in particular, his length. If you're trying to affect the quick passing game with mesh concepts, crossing routes, or when an offense is trying to get get the ball out of out of their hand via the quarterback. You know, Greg's tough to throw over. We, we've seen that with him, with AJ. Uh, those, those guys are tough to throw over. And hopefully you can exploit a little bit of a short area quickness advantage inside when we get the guards one on one. Slater is so good with Chargers. You know, pretty impressive. Uh, did you go into that game thinking we may have to do more pressures or simulated pressures? I mean, I realize a lot goes into that quarterback, but I mean, just the solid. Well, we, we, we always go in with, with, with wanting to have balance and um, with, as far as a game plan is concerned. And um, we were able to do that. Uh, we know who the dangerous. We, there's certain people that we just don't want to get started. And so if we can take, we can affect them with speeding the quarterback up or with fortifying the coverage in that direction, that's what you'd like to be able to do is to just have a little bit of balance in your game plan and affect those explosive elements with, with some of those things. Uh, yesterday, Sean said that playing time is earned uh, when he was talking, uh, answering a question about Von Miller. What in your mind is, is Von doing to earn that playing time? Work, just working hard and um, uh, continuing to work toward being in a position to get back to what we're used to seeing. Um, you, know, you know, Von has 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 earned a lot of respect. He's earned a lot of leeway. And uh, his situation is one that I'm not sure everybody is privy to with respect to him working back through the injury, tough injury, and just getting himself back into a position where he can he can really affect the quarterback in the way that we're used to seeing. So he's working his tail off. Uh, I'm satisfied with that. And uh, we'll just continue to move forward with that. Did he have a, did he have a setback that you're referring to there? Well, not so much a setback, but there, there are ups and downs. There are times when you, when, uh, in the process of, of working your way back to an elite level or to a consistently productive level, there are going to be ebbs and flows. There are going to be setbacks with, with, uh, with respect to him being able to depend and count on you know, what he can do, his body, his legs, everything, the coordination. And so 
I wouldn't say uh, setbacks, but there are definitely some 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 consistency areas that we want to try and make sure that we get to. And Vaughn's working hard on that. At, at least from the numbers, you know, the statistics, they're not there. So how do you weigh? And I'm sure you measure production in other ways other than just baseline stats. But how do you weigh his performance and what you're getting from him versus what you might be getting from someone else on your roster? Well, and you just mentioned it. You know, there are things that are obvious and there are things sometimes that are just obvious to us. And as far as stats, Vaughn has affected the game for the benefit of others with, with, as it pertains to our rush. You know, there have been some areas where we've been able to get the quarterback down, and he's been an integral part of that, but he didn't necessarily get credit for that. But we know what he did to affect the outcome of that play as a rusher. You know, if, if for example, the other night when, when uh, Puna Ford was able to sack the quarterback in the red zone. If Vaughn is two, three yards up the field, it gives the quarterback a lane to escape. Uh, Vaughn's rush technique fit that situation. It fit the launch point of the quarterback, and it was able to keep a nice, tight box around the quarterback so he didn't have options to escape or extend the play. So some of those things are very, very valuable. It's not, well, it's not necessarily that the, the, the standout splash statistical things that we're used to seeing but it definitely gives us a chance to have positive outcomes. Coach, I realize teams morph and change through the course of the year. Obviously, the Patriots outcome has some of those new quarterbacks being the most notable. Is their MO and approach on offense essentially the same from what you've been able to tell? Or has he brought maybe some new preferences based on his decision making or other things to that offense? Well, w without being in, in uh, I think what we're seeing from this particular quarterback is I think he's taking care of the football. I think the offense, I think they have an offensive philosophy. Uh, and I think that has persisted. And I think this, this young man is doing a, a little bit better job of taking care of the football and not uh, giving uh, the defense opportunities to take the ball away and, and, and some of those types of things. I don't see a lot of variation offensively, but I'm sure that there are some things with his skill set that may be unique to him. I know one thing, I know he's, he's much more elusive, he can extend plays, and he probably runs a little bit more than what we've seen, so we have to be aware of that, and we have to make sure that he can't extend plays. Kaywon Jones getting ramped up here over the last few weeks. What have you seen, and then what are your expectations once he is on the baseline? Uh, Daquan looks great, and, and that's a culmination of a, of a lot of hard work from the point that he, he became not available to us uh, from the once we got back from London and Daquan has been just from a mindset standpoint he's been looking forward he, he decided at that particular point that he was going to come back and play and what he's done uh, away from the field has just been has been phenomenal along with our training staff and so uh, he's been out he's been working and um, he's anxious to get back out there and I'm, I'm, I'll be excited to see him out there Well, you know, just some of the uncertainty of uh, the formations, just different looks that you may get, maybe unscouted looks. And just and when the game starts to speed up, you, you want to be crisp, you want to be sharp with your communication and make sure you have absolute certainty pre-snap. And I know exactly what Terrell is referring to. And um, I like the fact that, you know, he's hard on himself in that way because that with that position, comes a lot of responsibility in terms of communicating to the front and making sure that the back seven, that those guys are all on the same page. Uh, and he'll continue to get better with that. There have been some times where he's been outstanding, and then there were a couple of lapses the other night, and we're on top of that. He's on top of it. As a, uh, like a developer of players and an evaluator of prospects, when, what takeaways do you have when you think of AJ Evanescence for your team? that he's grown tremendously. And uh, that speaks to his character. You know, when you know, AJ and I came into this, into this program together, my first year coincided with his. And from day one, AJ has been not concerned with um, the role that he's had to play or that he's been thrust, thrust in as much as just being extremely productive when his number is called or when he has an opportunity to go out and play. AJ has matured. He's able to acquire a lot more information pre-snap 
and via the situation that he finds himself in. And um, so th there's just been a lot of growth, a lot of growth due to time on task and, and a lot of his just personal investment in getting better. Well, I, I think I know that AJ is spending a lot of time away from the daily schedule. I know that he's he's made a concerted effort to um, to invest in that way, and uh, it's paying off. AJ, when by the time we get to a certain game plan segment, AJ is already well briefed on uh, that situation and a lot of the personnel that he's going to have to face and compete against. So his what he's doing away from the schedule has really gone up and. And uh, AJ is able to go back now and to reference a lot of situations and experiences that he's had over the almost four years that he's been in the National Football League and in this particular situation. And he's and he, right, his confidence is everything. And I love where he is with that. And he's put a lot of work in to make sure that his preparation feeds into that. Very, very, very gratifying, and um, I don't think Ed will mind me sharing this. Ed, Ed obviously affected the game the way that he did, and um, on Christmas Day, Ed sent me, he communicated to me that there are some areas that he wanted to be better in. So when you look at that, when you hear someone talk about wanting to be sharper and better in a specific area after producing the way that he did and, and in the manner that he did, that's really cool to see because he has an attitude of not being satisfied, but also not being surprised when he's able to affect the game in the manner that he did. Going back to AJ, but you know, from a coaching standpoint, patience, having coaching patience with him, I mean, you know, because obviously he's better than he was when he came in. You know, how, how do you uh, balance that? You know, where it's like you know, sometimes you can say it's like, oh, you know, he didn't really have that many young guys, but uh, you know, like this young guy, we gotta feed him, force feed him a little bit. Well, um, it, it, the, pr the process and development happens sometimes when it happens. And you, as a, as a coach, as a facilitator, you want to affect that. Uh, you want it to happen as fast as you possibly can because we, we need the production and we need it, we need it yesterday. Uh, but there is a certain, there's, there is a fine line between having high expectations and uh, understanding that development will occur organically and naturally and also kind of pushing the player toward that or pushing the person toward that. AJ's matured. We have a great relationship. I think all of the guys respond to the process that we have, the, 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 our training process. It's consistent. They understand it. There's a lot of trust there. So, um, And let's, let's be honest. It, this is, it isn't like this is the first year that AJ has produced sacks or, 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 or splash plays. I think the rate and some of the situations that he's been able to do those things in He's putting everything together now. His point of attack run defense, his winning one-on-one -on -one as a pass rusher, uh, dropping into coverage. There's just a lot of detail with what he's doing, and I'm really proud of him. And then uh, another thought, uh, you know, <coughs> Greg uh, you know, had another good run defense game. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the uh, like unselfish uh, element? I mean, some guys who are obsessed with sacks, they might see them take themselves up field and out of uh, out of a play on a, on a run down, and you don't really see Greg doing that. No, no. You know, Greg, it, it, that's just not his character. Uh, Greg is going to react to the information that he's given, and um, and Greg's not he's not he's not hunting production outside of the situation or the call or the information that he's getting. He's going to do his job, and that's the beautiful thing about him, and that's why he's been a starter here since day one because as a rookie. And even during the draft process, you know, we saw that. We saw that level of character with him. And, um, you know, Greg had eight sacks last year. He had a little bit of – ran into a little bit of a bump. But we played them all over the, the, uh, the defensive line. And he's affected the game for others and for our defense and team. So uh, uh, Greg will have plenty of opportunities, and he'll have his double-digit moments maybe this year. 
Uh, you just you just can never count him out. Thank you.
what's going on. Good, how you guys doing? Uh, like they, uh, they do such a, a unique job that it's um, they got such a clear vision for how they want to utilize each player and understanding, um, regardless of injuries or, or whatnot, uh, the guys have uh, defined roles and they understand. Hey, when they're going into this week, hey, this is what we need to stop, and they do a great job at it. Um, it's a uh, it's it's as good of a defense as we're going to face or we faced all year, and so it's a great opportunity for us, but. Um, yeah, we got to know it. It's gonna, they're going to make you earn every single yard. When you look back at what happened this time, being the game, having the game, you did come out a couple of games where you threw it out short. Connecting or still just in that number of charges? Like, what's, why did it work last? Like, what was the reason for that? Yeah, I think, um, I think one, it just kind of speaks volume to who Gabe Davis is as a person, right? Like, I played wide receiver. Obviously, I wasn't any good, but you want to, you want to get touches. You want to get you want to get the ball, and you want to feel like you can you're gonna you know you can help the team. And uh, you know just for whatever reason, whether it's the Dallas game where we're just running the ball a lot, some of the balls just didn't naturally go his way. But he didn't blink. He showed up to practice. Unbelievable work ethic. Just kept working. Um, and him and Josh were able to just connect like they they always do, and then they're on the same page. And we don't win that football game without Gabe Davis. But like I told him, I said we don't win that football game without you having that mindset that you had of that competitive stamina of like, hey, it wasn't going my way, but my opportunity is going to come. And he made the most of it. And I was extremely pleased and proud of how he handled that. How have you seen um, Steph, uh, you know, you've been in the pro now for five, six weeks, whatever it's been, um, the production like he had earlier in the season just hasn't been there. How have you seen him handle that as you've got to try to work him? Look, Steph's been unbelievable. I mean, that C on his chest matters to him. Um, and I think just the, the guy, the offense in general, like, all they care about is winning football games, and it's been really, it's been really fun to see. And the guys in the locker room, the reality of it is there only is one football, and all we're concerned with is finding ways to win that football game. And whether it's run the ball like we did against Dallas, whether it's find a way to get one more point like we did this past week, you go into the locker room and everyone's happy, and that's that matters to me. Steph Diggs does so much even when he doesn't have the ball. Um, obviously, you want to get him as many touches, and you want to get him every catch that you can, but. Uh, there's so many there's so many things that he's opening up windows and you know Khalil Shakir's James Cooks like he's doing so much without the football um, that uh, he's doing like it's it doesn't necessarily always show up in the stat book but uh, um, he hasn't once blinked he's uh, just showing up to work and um, he's been great all he cares about is winning football games and I know he helps us win football games. Well, I think last week, just in general, I mean, it was, I think we only played 52 plays. Like last week, the numbers were going to be down for everybody. And I think that was just a product of, you know, the way that we were playing. So I don't think that was any, that wasn't anything intentional with him. I know he got nicked up a little bit on the first play of the game, but uh, I think some of that was just uh, the way that the game kind of was being played. Uh, look, I think, you know, we go into games and, you know, we tag plays, you know, with getting guys. The reality is Gabe Davis, Steph Diggs, like no matter who it is at wide receiver, like to be able to sustain success throughout the season, be able to play, they can't play every play. And so there's certain times where it's like, hey, it's going to be better for this person to not be on the field this play just to give them a blow knowing that, hey, this one's going to be coming or, hey, uh, that's the reason we have a bunch of wide receivers. And so knowing that uh, some of that stuff just kind of played out that way. While he may be opening things up for other people, does he need to actually be getting the ball more for this offense overall to reach its full potential? Yeah, I mean, yes. Um, like any, any given time you get the ball to Steph Diggs, good things happen. Um, but like I said, we're just trying to find ways to win that football game or whatever it is. Um, and, you know, fortunate the last couple of weeks we've been able to do that. Um, and, you know, if that's getting him 10 catches and we win the football games or him getting two catches and we win the football games, he's going to be the same way. Obviously, he's our best football player. He's our best receiver, and you want to get him involved because um, it makes us better and it allows us to continue to move the chains. Um, but whatever we got to do to win that football game, we're going to try to do our best to figure that out. Joe, you've had knocks after three games now. What, what have you learned? Now as your play club, what have you learned about who can play well in the past game? What are you talking Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, fortunately, regardless of court, just being the quarterback coach, you kind of get a feel of kind of who Dawson is, and you know, brings such a unique skill set to you know just combine that with. Dalton and Q, um, 
and then you know just his improvement in the run game just from you know what he was prior to even when I got here and just seeing the growth that he's been in that just allows him the, the versatility to be able to keep him out on the field you know no matter the route no matter the run play pass play and it, it makes my life a lot easier calling plays with that but um, you know first the first play of that last drive this past week just seeing him just the confidence in him and him being able to get off the release and, and make that play I mean we have full confidence in, in Dawson of you know whatever we're going to call he's going to find a way to get it done Uh, he just has, you know, as as all head coaches, you have great communication. Um, you know, he has clear expectations of what he wants. Um, you know, he allows us to do our job. Um, and uh, he's been clear, you know, since I've had the job, since going into offseason about what he what he looks for into this off se- uh, for this offense. Um, and, um, you know, if there's something that's not the way he sees it or he sees on tape, hey, I've been watching this defense and these are some things that I think uh, – you know, might give him the fits, you know, he'll chime in with that. And I greatly appreciate that. I walk down to his office and be like, hey, how would this give you, would this give you trouble? So just that dialogue, that communication, it's been, it's been great. No, um, like one thing about Josh is like he his his approach. He he's not going to let results dictate his his mindset and his approach. Like he, you know, when, when when we lose a football game, he showed up on Monday with the same "I'm ready to go for this week" mindset, and you kind of have to do that so the guys kind of can follow you. And um, you know, we've been winning. You know, we've won these last three games, um, but his approach, his mindset, he's been just as consistent as can be. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's obviously led to some success, but uh, nothing's changed in the way that he kind of approaches everything, and I'm proud of him for that. Joe, a couple of times in the last game, you had a four-minute cook on the field at the same time. What kind of flexibility does that give you to run that Yeah, I think any time that, you know, you could continue mixing in personnel groupings that, hey, maybe a, a defense hasn't seen or um, get the, you know, get a defensive coordinator to have to hesitate for a second of what call they want to do or they have to spend time game planning for a potential personnel grouping that you might not even put in the game, you know, making them have to kind of game plan for. And um, we're not just calling plays to call plays. Like, there's still there's intent behind it, just like there's intent in all of our plays. It's not like, hey, let's just run this play so, you know, a team has to game plan for it. I'm not saying that. But um, just trying to find ways to get our best football players on the field and uh, that we feel like it will be an advantage for us against, you know, said look of a defense. How do you feel? The Patriots switch things up in the red zone. Yeah, I think you, you know it's um, they do such a they do such a great job when you get in. They like I said, they make you earn it all the way down. You get in there, and then um, once you get in there, it kind of it, it, it switches up a little bit. Um, I think the biggest thing is just focusing on ourselves, um, you know, and and us just understanding. Hey guys, we just everybody need to do their job on the play and just trust. Hey, if this is your route, you run this route. Josh, just work yourself through the progressions, find your answers. Um, instead of making it necessarily all, all about them and what they're doing defensively, of kind of just making it about us. Um, I think is the most important thing. What did you see in the red zone in the league? Um, obviously, Josh uh, he had some good schemes at play. It was a quick pass, but I mean, just kind of what uh, do you attribute most to the fact that you're leading the league? Um, just uh, look, I think when you have 17 at quarterback, um, you know, you feel like whatever you call is going to, he's going to find a way to get it done. Um, and uh, it makes it makes life a lot easier. And um, you know, the way that we've been able to at least run the ball in some of the games makes it a little easier as you're getting down there, as you feel like, you know, you don't have to just pass the ball every single snap, but you know that you have 17 in there. And if you have to pass it, he's going to find a way to, if it's not clean, you know, playoff schedule and, and keep it going. So I wouldn't attribute it anything other than our guys are just trusting that when they get down there, they have the mindset that like, we want to finish these drives. Like, um, you know, we've had some games this year where we've kicked field goals down there. And so um, it's kind of, you know, just not necessarily flipping the mindset, but just making sure we're locked in and knowing that, hey, you know, uh, we want to come away with seven right here. What did you see from Leonard Fournette against the Chargers? Uh, I mean, it was so good. It was good to see him out there. You know, uh, the same guy that we've seen in, in practice every week, you know, he's going to play it. He's going to play, you know, as hard as he can be. You're, you're going to feel him running the football. You know, naturally, I would have liked to, 
you know, just in general, everybody had more than, you know, we, we ended up having like four drives or three drives where it was only one or two plays, you know, so you couldn't get guys into a rhythm last week, which was a little frustrating. Um, but I was pleased with the way that, A, just him just being able to pick up this offense. And I know he's been there for, call it half a year right now, but I mean, it's not easy to learn and be able to go in there, you know, without playing meaningful football and take a, you know, return a kick and get a couple carries. Um, you know, it's, he's, he's playing just like we expected him to. So all things being equal, do you anticipate Maybe get involved a little bit more down the stretch. Yeah, we'll see. You know, I think it's a you know week to week, week to week. We kind of evaluate, kind of hey, um, how do we feel like it? You know, matches up versus this team, and um, you know, as games go, hey, you know, what's it going to take to win that football game? Sometimes it might be getting this guy a carry. Maybe it's getting these guys, you know, getting James more than this, or hey, we got to throw it more to win this football game. So as opposed to um, you know, kind of thinking like that, we just kind of think it, you know, a, you know, game specific mindset and kind of go from there. I mean, David's David's first class as it gets. We were watching his uh, watching his high school highlight tape a couple weeks ago. You know, playing he's in Downers group, playing high school quarterback, long snapper, everything. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, um, but no, it's uh, it, it's it takes a unique a unique person to be able to play that jumbo position. But you also have to have the mindset because now you're playing further away from the football that you normally do. You're approaching blocks differently. You know, you're in pass protection on you know, a defensive end or a blitzing safety, and you're usually, you know, on a three technique or a shade. And so it is completely different. Um, and so you have to, uh, um, you have to get ready for the game on a snap of a play. I can be going in and now I'm playing the rest of the game at a guard and I'm sitting on the sidelines cold as can be. And now I got to run on the field and, you know, he's not 150 pounds, you know, you got to run on and off the field, but uh, he's as locked in as it gets, has an unbelievable personality. Like everybody loves being around Dave and we know that when he's on the field, good things happen. And so, uh, whether it's pass pro or run the ball, the more the more that David's on the field, good things happen. Yeah, look, I think um, it helps that you know uh, Cromer was with him in, in Los Angeles, so you kind of know that you got to have a really smart guy that can handle that, a guy that kind of understands, you know, that has length that can you know be able to block some of these different types of defensive ends and stuff. So. Um, with that, you know, I wasn't probably involved in some of that conversation with it, what, but uh, I know that there was a clear vision for him, you know, when you brought him here as, hey, this guy can play, he can be a starting guard in this league, and then he also brings us value in being able to do that, a uh, lot, lot, lot to that. Ready to make a catch? What's up? Ready to make a catch? Ah, turn on the high school highlight tape, you know, you guys, you guys will see what kind of athlete he is. <laughs> I, would, yeah, I would love that. I right, appreciate you guys.